all of our viewers back to the uh, third edition of the Chad Lister Show here on the Crusader Sports Network. I'm joined as usual by North Greenville University men's head basketball coach Chad Lister. Coach, thanks again for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, the Crusaders have played two games since our last show. Uh, last Tuesday against uh, Warren Wilson, they picked up their first win in a 79-57 uh, road win. And then last night they fell to Mars Hill by a score of uh, 101 to 73. Now, Coach, uh, before we get into the games, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the uh, pregame ceremony honoring Jordan Robinson and his family and his memory. If you would, just talk to us about that. Sure. It was a great night for those that were in Hayes Gym and especially for our current players and former players that came back last night to honor and remember Jordan Robinson who passed away from sarcoma this summer and uh, his family, um, two of his brothers and, and Jordan's mom and dad were present last night and, and shared with our team um, before we went out on the floor last night and, and we really had a good half hour with the family and, and remembering Jordan and and uh, just really talking about uh, uh, a lot of things that are more important than basketball, to be quite honest. And uh, certainly the life that Jordan Robinson led was, um, you know, one that uh, really spoke about Jesus Christ even in his silent manners. And uh, Jordan was just uh, really the epitome of what we're looking for here at North Cream as far as student athletes. He, he led a life that, um, you know, really uh, showed Christ in everything that he did on and off the floor. And we wanted our players that knew him to have some time of healing and remembrance. And we wanted uh, the players that didn't have an opportunity to play with Jordan to, to get to know him through, through his family. So it was a great night. And then obviously giving the jersey to his family before the game, I thought uh, they were really appreciative of that. And, and uh, so it was an emotional night for, for our team and, and certainly the North Greenville basketball family. Yeah, I know. I think uh, everybody in attendance was touched by it, and it was really a good thing in that way. Um, yeah, right, uh, moving into the game, uh, played Mars Hill last night, and for for our viewers who don't, maybe aren't as familiar with you know our opponent, Mars Hill is a team that you know returns three All Conference players from their team last year, uh, have three guys averaging over 15 points a game, and. Uh, really look to make a lot of noise in the SAC conference this year. Now with that being said, uh, Coach, you know, I thought we came out and played really well for the start of the game and really competed there for a while. And then with about six minutes to go in the first half, the wheels just kind of fell off for us. I mean, what, uh, what kind of happened to us at that point? Well, we, we led 20 to 16 and it was all downhill from there, but uh, our guys understood that uh, we were playing a pace uh, that was the way that Mars Hill wanted to run and it was obviously not the pace that that uh, we wanted and we had talked about that and and uh, we just took the bait and continued to, to try to push and and uh, couldn't slow ourselves down couldn't uh, make ourselves get into a half court came and, and uh, execute and Mars Hill is a good team they took advantage of those mistakes and uh, they use turnovers to, to get easy baskets on the other end and, and when you're turning the ball over and not getting shot attempts and uh, your opponent's shooting layups at a high percentage then uh, you're in for a long night and that's what happened. Right. Okay, um, uh, in the first half I thought that, uh, well for the game I guess, I, t t I thought TJ Resper played well especially, you know, really competed hard in the first half. I thought he, w he was really dogging the opposing team's point guard. And, uh, you talked to us about how TJ played? Well, TJ is a freshman from the Charlotte area. He's going to be a good one for us. Uh, he's going to make some mistakes, though. Right. You've got to take the good with the bad right now. We're, we've got nine freshmen and nine new players and, and uh, trying to get them experience on the floor. And we've been struggling at the point guard position, and, and uh, he and Tyler Maines are, are battling for playing time, and we've, we've even tried playing them together. Uh, on the floor at the same time, so uh, you know TJ's going to make some mistakes, but but he is talented. Uh, when he makes good decisions, he's a good distributor of the basketball, and he can shoot it as well. But uh, we've got to cut down on turnovers, and TJ's not immune to that. Right. Uh, you, 
You mentioned uh, you know, the nine freshmen getting guys in the game. Is that uh, something that kind of went into your thoughts last night when uh, it was 16 minutes to go in your uh, substitution decisions? Well, you know, it was very obvious with the adjustments that we made at halftime and to try to slow things down and, and making sure that we were able to handle their full court pressure, uh, that our starting five did not respond to that. So uh, it didn't take very long for us to see that we needed to make a change and maybe bring in some guys that uh, understood what adjustments needed to be made. So uh, that was the move, and, and uh, I thought we had some guys come off the bench and play hard again. A lot of young basketball players on the floor playing against a very experienced, senior-laden Mars Hill team, and and uh, we made some mistakes, continued to turn the ball over, and, and uh, you know we closed the margin a little bit there in about a three or four-minute stretch, but um, uh, still talent won over last night, and uh, you know our effort uh, did not match uh, their intensity last night. All right. Um. Moving on to the Warren Wilson game, uh, you know, uh, I guess it was it was last Tuesday. We got got a big our first win of the season, and it was on the road. And any 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 uh, game you can win on the road is a big win, and especially if you can get a lot of guys in the game, and, and those guys respond by playing well. Can you talk to us, uh, give us a little bit of a recap about the Warren Wilson game. Sure, Warren Wilson's a much improved team. They're playing a much better schedule, and uh, they've got some guys that can play, and it's good to pick up a road win and. And uh, we didn't have any player that played more than 20 minutes. Uh, so a lot of guys saw a lot of minutes. Uh, we were able to uh, use our athleticism and, and full court pressure to get some easy baskets early and uh, did what we had to do to put that one away on the road. Sometimes when you're on the road, you just take it any way you can get it, whether it's ugly or not. And, and uh, we made some shots when we needed to and, and was able to pull away. Uh, so, so far in the young season, there's been a lot of fluidity in your starting lineup. Is that something that we can look uh, to continue, or is that something that you're really trying to get a starting lineup locked down, but just hadn't happened yet? Yeah, unfortunately, you're seeing a lot of different starting lineups, and that means we're we're not uh, we're not where we want to be as far as you know knowing who we can count on in certain situations. So we're rotating a lot of guys in, trying to get get guys a feel for our system and and what we're trying to accomplish and, and uh, paying attention to details when they're in there. And, and uh, I think after the break, hopefully we'll be able to, to find a core group of guys that, that is gonna be able to come out of the gates and, and actually give us a lead to start, and then we can move from there. But that, that's what we're shooting for. You know, one of the things I've always just kind of been curious about is being that, you know, a lot of coaches, they, you know, they start out in the the schedule before the conference trying to figure out you know how, kind of their team and what lineups they want to bring with but since we're not in a conference you know at, at what point do you you know do you decide where you need to go as far as what lineups you know when you when, when you need to shorten your bench basically well when you're a division two independent every game is a conference game and uh, you know you're not you're not building up to the South Atlantic uh, conference schedule or the Carolinas conference schedule as a D2 independent uh, every night's got to be important to you, and uh, your only opportunity to make the NCAA tournament is is as an at-large team, and that uh, means every night out a, a W is important. So that's the way we're we're taking the approach. Uh, you know, are we going to win uh, 20, 22 games this year? Probably not with the start that we've had, but we certainly have an opportunity to come back after the break, improve get some of these young guys some experience and hopefully uh, this team like most of the teams we've had since I've been here will play the best basketball late in the season. You mentioned the break and uh, the Crusaders actually go on a month-long break they don't play again until uh, January 3rd and you know I really think that's going to be big for you guys. What, what, how do you guys plan to handle the, uh, the long layoff? Well we've got some guys that that just need some healing time and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, that was going to be possible. We also wanted to make sure that, that our young men uh, have an opportunity to focus solely on academics. Uh, as we get toward the end of the term, uh, we're not trying to, to juggle in a practice or a shoot around in between exam schedules. And, and they can use the next week to study and, and do the things that they need to do to be successful in the classroom and uh, be the student athletes that they are.